Hi guys, Gordon here from GCreate. What do you think of the new space? Yeah? We can hopefully shoot a lot more videos here to, to show off the printer and uh, give you guys tutorials. Uh, speaking of tutorials, today we want to show you how to design this. This is the parametric twist lamp shade thing. <laughs> now we get a lot of people asking, how do I design? And we thought this would be a great starter because it's a fairly simple model, um, but it's also a, a pretty cool looking design. Um, we took the same concept and actually printed this. <laughs> it's actually the same model, same design, or it's actually a little slightly different design. It has more fins, but uh, because of the, the way we designed this parametrically, you can just scale it and, and print pretty much any size you want. Look at that thing. This is probably more like a trash bin rather than a big light or something. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to show you how to print something a little smaller, a little bit quicker and easier. Um, this here, let's see if I can get you a better shot of it. Focus a little bit. It's a really cool looking model. It's like mesmerizing. You can kind of see the inside here. I like this. So this was actually printed in, um, hang on real quick. This was printed in Polymax PLA. This stuff is, uh, it's been great to print with. We've been trying, trying to test with it. Um, it actually, it's a little bit softer than PLA, normal PLA. Um, I guess it's a higher impact resistance, but uh, as you can kind of see in the model, it's, it's actually kind of almost slightly squishy. But um, it's really easy to print with, I guess, because of that. Uh, we found very little curling or, or any issues, and the color on it is, is fantastic. So you can kind of see, comes in your standard kind of spool format, uh, hard, you know, hard plastic spool. Um, really great stuff. So if you're interested, that's, that's what we're printing in uh, right now. And um, put this back. Yeah, so from here, let's just go ahead. Uh, we're going to jump into 3D Studio Max for the design. And uh, for the slicing engine, we're going to use Simplify 3D. So you get a little bit of tutorial on both. Why 3ds Max? Well, it's what I've been using for many years. It's what I like and it's what I know. And you can actually design parametrically inside of it pretty easily. So I think that's a really good way to, to start. So hope you enjoy. All right, so here we are in 3ds Max 2011, or it's actually 3ds Max Design 2011. Um, it's, I know it's not the most parametric program, but they're, the way it works is you, you can build upon um, both mesh models and um, splines and things like that and add modifiers. And the modifiers are basically parametric, so you can actually adjust parameters and, and really watch your model change in real time. This is a great way to design, in my opinion, because it's, it's nice to be able to adjust your model later, but also see what, your changes, you're doing, what changes you are doing in real time which uh, really is, is part of the design process. So uh, in relation to the twist lamp, uh, we know, or I guess twist lamp base thing, <laughs> we know that um, we wanted to make it parametric to begin with, so I tried using all of the, uh, the kind of standard um, objects within this program. So to begin with, whenever you're doing any sort of kind of star pattern or fractal, even like the Koch, Koch uh, vase, uh, it's great to start with, uh, in this case, let me grab a, a spline. Under splines, they have a thing called a star. There's obviously other things, but a uh, star is what we really were going after. So if I go ahead and oop, click star, now you can see this is kind of what we wanted. We wanted something that has a very uh, <laughs> kind of deep fins, and um, it's a bit sharper than we want, but we can play with the settings. Let me go ahead and make this yellow. Maybe let me make it a little bit easier to see. Yeah. So now let's set our outer radius, uh, because it's the bottom of this, to be something a little bit smaller. So maybe like two, you know, two inch diameter maybe. And set the inner radius to be something like, I don't know, half inch. Yeah, maybe a little bit smaller, a little bit larger. Yeah, let's do like three quarters of an inch or something like that. For now. You can always adjust them later. Now what we're going to do to give it a little bit more curvature is take down these crazy, set this to zero for now, take down these crazy uh, sharp corners. Uh, yeah, actually go a little bit lower than that. And you can actually just click and drag these um, 
these uh, little arrows here, and then it'll actually just do it in real time, which is nice. Now, there's a feature I just changed here called distortion. This is really neat because you can actually turn this up, and what it'll do is kind of favor the curvature towards one side, so you get some really neat effects, something like, you know, like that, where you're actually even getting some twisting coming back the other way. something like that. I'm just going to kick this out a little bit more. And it really is just a matter of playing with some of these settings. Distort it the other way. There. I think that's a pretty cool starter pattern. Now let's just jump right into uh, adding a... Um, oh sorry, I should actually I should mention that we currently set this to 20 points. You can do 10. You can do 50. <laughs> if you do 50, it's they're a bit close together, so 20 might be a good starter. But yeah, let's let's go ahead and add an extrude modifier now. Now there's plenty of different modifiers in here, but uh, extrude is what we're after. Now in this case, uh, let me put red on here so you can see it. Uh, actually, by default, this starts. Okay, so now that we have a really cool shape, let's go ahead. Okay, now that we have a really cool shape, let's go ahead and add a modifier. The uh, the first modifier we really want is called extrude. In this case, there's many different ones in this uh, this drop down here, but extrude is what we're really after. So okay, now let's go ahead and extrude it. Uh, I I think I had it set before to six inches, so six inches sounds good to me. And you'll see all it does is actually take that spline and extrude it up vertically six inches. But you'll notice it's pretty much one consistent extrude. There's no segments breaking up this extrusion. So if I turn up the segments, we're going to go somewhere near like 10 for now. You'll see that now you actually have segments going vertically. So now this is broken up in 10 uh, separate areas. This is good because um, it's actually needed because as we do the rest of the modifiers, you need to have uh, a higher polygon model so you don't see the kind of faceted surfaces. So great. I mean, for now, I'm happy with that. We can always go back and change these parameters in real time, and that'll update the model, and that's what we were really going after. Uh, the next modifier we want to add is going to be called Taper. Well, taper is a, a really cool modifier. It can be used uh, in many different ways, but in this case, if we just go ahead and taper the top, you'll see it literally just tapers it from a you know, smaller size to a larger size. It kind of basically scales it up. Now, there's a really cool thing here under curve. If you start adjusting the curvature, that'll actually make it so it curves as it tapers as opposed to just doing a straight line. This is why we needed the segments. If you don't have the segments, it'll actually still be a straight line. And let's go ahead and bring this top down a little bit. I want the top to be a little bit bigger than the bottom, but not much. Here's the front view. I'm going to take these off so you can see it. Yeah, that's not too bad. Kick out the curvature a little bit more. All right, yeah, I like that. It's a little squat. Maybe we can go ahead and make it like eight inches tall. You can always scale this later, so I'm just gonna get a nice size that I seem to like. There. So great, let's go ahead now and start with the fun stuff. We're gonna add our very first twist modifier. Now what this is going to do is obviously twist the model. Really high or really low. Now that's kind of it's a great look, looking kind of pattern, but it's a little boring because it's just a simple twist from top to bottom. Now we want to go ahead and bias this a little bit more towards the bottom in this case. So let's really twist it. So the bottom is really twisted, and then you can kind of maybe see it better here. And then as it goes up to the top, it's a little bit more gentle. Now this is important because of what we're going to do next. We're going to add another twist. Now what this twist is going to do is go the other way. Now we're starting to get somewhere. We have it twisting one way and then fighting back and going the other way. This one I'm not going to add any bias. I just want it to twist back. And I'm going to add I'm going to go even further. I'm going to add a third twist. And yes, you guessed it. It's going to twist back the other way. But we want to bias this towards the top. There you go. Now what we're getting is the first twist is really biased towards the bottom. 
the other twist is biased towards the top, and the one in the middle is just cutting it back. So you're starting to get a really cool, nice curved design. And because these are all modifiers that you can just go ahead and edit, we can go back to any of the original. You can actually turn them off here. You can go back to the, any of the original settings and start tweaking them. So instead of 20 points, what if you just want 10? And that's what 10 looks like. Maybe you did like the 20. I think actually I want to go ahead and increase the inner radius a little bit. Let me bring down these radii. There we go. That's looking kind of cool. If we go back to any of these modifiers at any point, you can go ahead and adjust it, adjust your tapers. Kick this out a little bit more. Maybe it's, it's a little squat, so let's go even higher with this, maybe like 12 inches. Nah, 10 inches. There we go. So yeah, this is really the basis of how you how you design these, these objects. And, and you can go ahead and adjust any of these settings. Um, you can actually add more segments here, maybe 40. And that'll make it a much smoother. I actually should do that so you can see it. So you, went, you had 10 before, and now you have 40. It'll make it a much smoother curve. In the original spline, if you go to interpolation, you can actually turn these the steps for the actual curves up or down, and that'll make it so there's a little bit more detail or less detail. So this might speed up the processing of your model, but it, you'll see the edges and the curves might be a little bit more rough. Whereas if I go back there and kick this up, you'll see that this is adding a lot of detail inside of here, even at 8, 9, or 10. So it's becoming a much higher density model, but it's very smooth. So if you're going to print large, you really want to have a lot of polygons. And you could always go back to the original model and just add more. All right, so I'm going to jump into, after, after showing you how we made the model, I'm going to jump into a series of models that we made um, available for download on our website. Um, I'll have the link in the description. And um, these are the actual ones that, um, that we printed and, and made ourselves. All right, so this is the file we actually used for the, the models you, you can download. So we went ahead and took the base models that we started with, and we just want to show you what you can do when you actually just play with the parameters, um, which is it's pretty neat. So this here was uh, essentially the original one, very similar to the one we just, we just designed. You'll see that um, in this case, I, I did a, a smaller radius for the inner, inner radius and a, a larger, or uh, I guess a smaller one for the outside. So the fins are a little bit shorter. Uh, but you can kind of see here's the settings we used. You have one inch, uh, just under what three quarters of an inch. You know, 20 points. Um, this this star only has 20 points because uh, we wanted to print it small. Um, if we want that that large model that you saw earlier that we printed that had the 40 points, so you know it, it just needed more detail. So here's the series of events to make the the one you can download now. Here's the extrude. We have it set to uh, six inches. Yep. The taper is a little bit more, it's a gentle taper. Of, there's the, the numbers. Here's the first twist at the top. Here's the second twist kind of in the middle, which is already starting to make a great shape. It looks really nice. And then we wanted to kind of soften it just a little bit, so that last one just softens it just a little bit back there. But yeah, we thought it was really a cool design. We also set it to have... Um, uh, 100 segments, so it's a pretty high quality model. So when you go ahead and print it, you won't see all the faces. But yeah, now taking that and going to the next level, this is the 40 point star. Now, this is made to be printed large. If you print it small, the fins might get a little bit too close together and have trouble printing. So you'll see if I slowly work the way up here, there's a lot of uh, geometry in here. So now you can kind of see the differences. These, The only difference between these two is just the number of fins. And here you can see this is the wireframe, so you can see this one's a little bit more dense. <laughs> if I zoom in, it's really, really a high-quality dense model. There, look at that. <laughs> now I'm going to go ahead and turn these off so they don't bog us down. Just work my way down. I could just turn the layer off, but this is easy enough. Oop. Oh, that was the top, top twist. I didn't even turn the top twist on. There we go. That's why it looks like the other one now. Now, we took the same idea, and for the extrude, we only have three segments in this one, and you can see what it'll do. Now, you can kind of see 
the actual vertical or kind of the z-axis segments are so low that as you start adding the twist modifiers, it's this really crazy kind of very straight kind of edged model. So these twists are very, very sharp for versus like the kind of curved one from before. And that's literally just changing the number of segments. Now the last one I think is probably my favorite. Now, as I get into the last one, let me oh, let me turn on the first one again. So here's the first model. This is a solid model. There's no shell, there's no edges. It's just one solid object. There's a top and a bottom. So it's a watertight solid model. This is very important because the way we want to print it, we want to have it so there's no infill and you're only printing the outer um, walls. So in this case, you have to have a, a flat top. It has to be horizontal and it can't be angled because we want to turn the top off. You'll see in this one, this is a whole different approach. So it might look similar and it might be a really cool model, but it's a very different way to print it. So what we started with was we extruded it but we instantly you can see that it's actually hollow on top. But there's a bottom to it. Maybe I turn this on. There's a bottom to it, but the top is turned off. In the extrude modifier, you can actually just tell it cap start or cap end. And then we want cap end off. Now I tapered it initially this way. Very different than before. Then as you start adding the modifiers, now I bulged it out so you have this really sharp kind of higher point on one side. Then I started adding the twist modifiers. Now you have this really cool shape, almost like a flame or something. But you can't print this the same way you're going to print the other one. So you have to actually add a shell to this. You have to have, you have to have thickness to the outer walls. That's where you start running into issues with printing. So, you know, this is just to show you what you can do with the model. But uh, the other one is a much easier print by far. So now if I add shell, you'll see that there's actually a thickness now to the outer wall. And that shell thickness, we have it set to, you know, a 30 second of an inch, somewhere around there. The thing with that is, depending on the scale you print the model at, it really affects that shell. You know, it, it'll affect how many walls you have, or the thickness, or, or even the print time, or the quality. So this is more just just play with it at your own risk and, and have fun with it. But um, if you can get it to print, it'd be a really cool model. So yeah, so just by changing some of the simple parameters, we're able to go from this to uh, to this to the higher quality model, higher quality model. <laughs> If I twist this the other way, you get some really crazy things. Uh, I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> so now that you've seen what you can do just by changing some of the parameters and, and some of the settings, uh, you can see the, the variety and the vast uh, changes in the models. Um, we're going to go ahead and print this one. This is the, uh, the like I, as I mentioned, this is the, the large one that we printed before. But we're going to show you how to print this one because it's a little bit smaller and it's probably able to be printed easily and quickly. So uh, from here, we're going to jump into Simplify 3D uh, 3.0, and um, here we go.